Coming up on the Q30 newscast, new protocols for food deliveries and transportation on the Mount Carmel campus. Plus, find out what collaboration both Tom Ellett and SGA are currently working on. And the beginning of Native American History Month has kickstarted important conversations regarding indigeneity within Quinnipiac. All that and more. This is the Q30 newscast. Seven days later, and we are back to the best day of the week. It's time for the Q30 Newscast. I'm Ben Kane, and sharing the desk with me tonight is Fiona Stevens. A lot has happened in this world of news this past week, especially for Quinnipiac. Ben, are you ready to dive right in? We only have 30 minutes, so we got to go right now. You're right. Last Friday, Chief of Public Safety Tony Reyes announced the new food delivery protocols for the Mount Carmel campus. Why the change from Hogan Road to North Lot in the Bobcat Way guard booth? Q30's executive producer Olivia Cattell has the story. Quinnipiac University Public Safety made changes to the transportation and food delivery pickup and drop off location guidelines. In a series of emails sent out by Chief of Public Safety Tony Reyes last Friday, these new locations are the guard booth on Bobcat Way as well as North Lot to ensure safety. Bobcat Way has always been there. Um, North Lot, because it's on the opposite end, looking for a place that is regulated. We have um, that that's under surveillance 24 seven and you know both physically and through cameras. Hogan Road will also be removed from the list of designated pickup and drop off locations. This decision is mostly due to concerns from public safety and residents on the street including speeding and traffic congestion. You know, the residents that live in that area frustrated with the fact that you know they, they avoid that going down that way because you know, again, the hazards caused by the Uber drivers and the high congestion. Everybody kind of knows that Hogan Road is not the ideal place for Ubers to go, but we continue to allow it. We, you know, and students trade convenience for safety every single day. Hogan Road was previously used because of its proximity to dorms like Ledges and Mountain View, but public safety implemented the new rules in an effort to compromise with students. Another component of the guidelines is the ability for students to order food deliveries from certain local businesses directly to their dorm buildings on Bobcat Way. We would go and offer it to the to the owners. They would have to agree to provide us the license plates of all the delivery vehicles and the drivers um, and uh, so that we can, you know, um, vet them out. The goal of these new rules is to increase safety and convenience for students and the surrounding community. For Q30 News, I'm Olivia. The Student Government Association voted on a resolution to audit the Office of Student Accessibility Services. SGA is urging the OSA to cooperate with students to meet both their physical and academic needs, from updating signage and walkways to alternative testing sites. Q30 spoke to class, sophomore class president Thomas Peters to learn more. We have tried to contact them through email, uh, through phone, and we were unable to make any sort of contact until after we passed the resolution. We just wanted to make sure that the Office of Student Accessibility is meeting the needs of the students. Members of the Quinnipiac community are once again being recognized for their achievements in the classroom. Six members of the university staff and faculty are the latest recipients of the Center of Excellence in Teaching and Service to Students Awards. Celebrating its 20th year, the award given by Quinnipiac is one of the highest honors employees can receive from the university and comes from nominations by both students, alumni, and colleagues within the community. Q30 producer Joseph Monti spoke with one of the award winners on what it means to them. All the hard work for the past nine years and every, every small thing that I did in a course, it's finally being recognized and finally being, like, means something. It's, it, it, I always did it for my students and just, you know, caring for them. But now I felt like, oh, <laughs> it's, it's been recognized on another level. And it felt like um, reaffirmation that what you're doing is correct. Quinnipiac University and the Kinetic Community Outreach Revitalization Program, or CONCORP, have inducted an inaugural cohort of 19 minority-owned businesses in their partnership program. The Community Entrepreneurship Academy and Clinics aims to uplift small businesses from the greater New Haven area as a result of a $406,000 grant from the U.S. Small Business Administration Quinnipiac received this past August. Put a huge spotlight on black businesses especially black businesses in New Haven or in, in the greater New Haven area. 
like really lifting up the power of black businesses and at the same time lift up the, the power of small businesses. The collaboration continues. Chief Experience Officer Tom Ellett has teamed up with SGA to host his second installation of Talks on the Rocks this year. Students and faculty were invited to attend an open forum at York Hills on the Rocks to ask questions about the university's future changes that could also be implemented, while also being served a three-course meal. Tim Malone has the story. On Tuesday night, the Quinnipiac Campus Restaurant on the Rocks featured a collaboration event between the Student Government Association and Chief Experience Officer Tom Ellett called Talks on the Rocks, an event that invited students and faculty to sit down together, share a three-course dinner, and discuss future changes and ideas that would be beneficial to the Quinnipiac campus. This is an event that allows faculty, students, and staff to come together and talk about what we want to see change about the university, what's working well about the university, and really just how we can improve for the future. Students and faculty were randomly sat down together at various tables while a prompt was given for everyone to discuss and write down answers. These answers were then shared for everyone to hear. The feedback and ideas were recorded by the school and SGA to consider in the future. It was really fun. Um, I'm glad I came. It, the food was great and also the conversations were a lot more interesting than I think I expected them to be. They were a lot more involved and there were some good ideas. I really just hope that people can come together and talk about their experiences here and learn from each other and then allow us to learn from it as well. This is the second Talks on the Rocks this semester. SGA is hoping to do one once a month. Any students interested in sharing their ideas in an open forum like this should look out for the next email to sign up for the next Talks on the Rocks. For Q30 News, I'm Tim Malone. The School of Law has invited a reproductive lawyer to speak to the Quinnipiac community about abortion laws in the U.S. this Thursday. Gerald Hayes will be holding seminars on the North Haven campus discussing many topics, including the implications of changing the legal landscape for abortion care providers. The discussion is a part of the Better Health Equity series and will run from 12 to 1 p.m. This Friday, the Quinnipiac University School of Law will host its 12th alternate dispute resolution symposium with topics such as online trials amidst the pandemic and their efficacy. The moderated discussion will host legal professionals from around the country and is open to the public. Q30 spoke with law professor Charles Pillsbury about the impacts on the Connecticut courts and beyond. Washington State, from New York State, from uh, uh, Chicago, and uh, looking at, uh, and I think they're facing the same issues that we faced here in Connecticut. Uh, but I think what's important to think, realize is that this exper experiment with you know, online jury trials, online court trials, has changed the way law is practiced. Coming up in just a few short minutes, find out how an organization on campus is helping students feel more connected with their identity. Plus, the Quinnipiac International Business Society hosts its annual dinner to support refugees. And if there's one word I don't want to hear this week, it's rain. Yep, Keith Savage is here to hopefully give us good news with the latest weather forecast. Ben, indeed, I have good news. Look at the weather. It's looking nice. Sunny today. It was, it's going to be sunny tomorrow. And on Friday, it's also going to be nice out. You can't ask for much more during the fall. It's going to be great, but stay tuned for more. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the song. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tape. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. Where, what? My. Oh. <laughs> no, you can't. The scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. 
If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. Welcome back to the Q30 Newscast. Thanks for sticking with us. While the month of November is typically thought of as the beginning of the Christmas season, it more importantly represents Native American History Month. Julia Barcello spoke with student leaders on campus to see exactly how the university is celebrating this month. This month, we celebrate Native American Indian Heritage Month. Although only 0.3% of students at Quinnipiac University are of Native American heritage, it still holds a large presence at the university. For Quinnipiac, um, I feel like it's not really acknowledged by the university that we are on indigenous land. Many elaborated by stating. Yeah, um, I think for my time as a freshman, I can definitely say Quinnipiac is doing a lot more. We have a lot more resources through the Department of Global and Cultural Engagement. President of the Indigenous Student Union, Ayana Baker, explained the annual teaching event held by the university, which is a great way for all students to learn about the Indigenous culture at QU. Teaching basically just goes over the local tribes and like um, important Indigenous issues like here on campus and off campus. There are events planned for each week this month to honor the Indigenous heritage, from a Native American food night to a tabling event. Baker further discussed the best ways for students to honor this month. Just showing up to like all of the events to further their education as we do like presentations at those events to go over the importance of each of them. Like for example tonight at the food night we're going over a presentation that talks about um, the importance of the food in the Native American culture. Mm -hmm. Make sure to stay on the lookout for upcoming Indigenous student events. For Q30 News, I'm Julie Barcello. On Thursday, the university is hosting its annual Indigeneity Initiative teach-in. The event will feature different guest speakers, including many members of the faculty and staff, plus students. They will discuss topics ranging from archaeology to certain tribal nations to a wide array of cultures. The teach-in will be in the piazza from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and all are welcome. The Indigenous Student Union hosted a food celebration today in the Carl Hansen Student Center in an effort to bridge a connection between Indigenous students and their cultural identity. On the menu was Indian tacos and pudding as well as sassafras tea. The ISU were positive with their turnout and the great start to Native American History Month. Ever wanted to study in the nation's capital but don't want to be too far from home for a long time? Well, Quinnipiac is now offering a week-long course in Washington, D.C. from January 3rd to the 11th. The J-Term course will help students get a first-hand understanding of politics, as well as give them an opportunity to engage with experts in the field. The course will cost $200 plus the tuition fee for a January term class, but will earn participants their three credits. Housing for students will be no extra charge as well, and the deadline for any students interested to apply is November 9th. It's exciting to see all these events and initiatives being offered this November to just recognize the Indigenous community. Now, Ben, the midterm elections are coming up, so we are definitely overdue on a political update. Lucky for us, Olivia Cattell is here to give us the scoop. Olivia, what do you have for us? Thank you, Ben and Fiona. With midterm elections in less than a week and early voting already underway, there has been a lot going on in the world of politics recently. Beginning in Florida, where President Biden has been campaigning this week, he made a stop in Miami Gardens on Tuesday to endorse Democratic candidates for Senator and Governor Val Demings and Charlie Crist, who are on the ballot against Senator Marco Rubio and Governor Ron DeSantis, respectively. The two candidates spoke about abortion access in the state of Florida and beyond, before President Biden went on to discuss Social Security and Medicare, stating that both would be at risk if the Republican Party were to gain control over Congress, and ultimately deeming the upcoming election as, quote, a choice between two vastly different visions for America, end quote. Looking up north to the state of Michigan, where the race for Congress in the 7th District is heating up between Democratic Representative Alyssa Slotkin and Republican Senator Tom Barrett. This seat is being watched very carefully, as it is one of the most tightly contested seats in the country. It is also receiving the most outside funding, amounting to almost $27 million altogether. It is also notable as Republican Liz Cheney recently endorsed the Democratic Slotkin and reiterated the message in person Tuesday night. Uh, it's really my honor to be here to endorse uh, Alyssa. And uh, although we certainly have disagreements on you know, a number of issues, um, she's exactly the kind of person that we need in Congress. And now looking out west to the state of Arizona and the gubernatorial race between Democrat Katie Hobbs and Republican Carrie Lake. At a rally on Monday, Lake made a remark about House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul, 
who was brutally attacked last Friday by David DePape at the Pelosi residence in San Francisco. He broke into the home looking for Speaker Pelosi, but only found Paul there before hitting him in the head with a hammer and knocking him unconscious. Lake's comments drew laughter after she said, quote, Nancy Pelosi, she's got protection when she's in D.C. Apparently her house doesn't have a lot of protection, end quote. This has caused much backlash, including from her opponent, Hobbs, to which Lake further responded that she was being attacked for speaking the truth. Lake currently leads the race by more than three points. That's all I have for political news tonight. I'll send it back to the desk. Thank you, Olivia. Now we're going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. We still have Keith Savage in studio with the seven day forecast. Plus a course on campus is making its long awaited return. Stick with us, Quinnipiac. We'll be right back. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is prediabetes can be reversed, and for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I need a new career. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. After high school, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to start working. I got laid off twice. But you gotta keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Clear skies and a shining sun can only mean one thing. The Q30 newscast is back from commercial break. Here to tell us if this weather will continue is Keith Savage. Thank you guys. Let's get right into the weather again today. It was nice at 71 degrees on Thursday. Tomorrow it's going to get a little bit colder, but you still got to love the weather. On Friday and over the weekend, it's going to get a bit cooler, but you can't complain about that. It's about 73, 72, a little cloud. That's perfect weather for this fall season like this. It's the end of the week. On Monday and Tuesday, it's going to be great too. Tuesday, it's going to be a little cooler, but I can't, can't complain that much. Let's go on to Connecticut weather. On to Connecticut, you got New London at about 52 right now, which again, is solid for the fall of 42, 48 in Norwich. Then Hartford, it's around the same, and in New Haven too. Overall, amazing weather for the fall. You can't complain much more than this because it's amazing right now. It's Quinnipiac season. It's November. Back to you guys on the desk. Thanks, Keith. Traveling salesman, more like traveling student. The UC course from script to stage is making its long-awaited return after the pandemic stopped it from running. The course gives students the opportunity to travel to the theater and watch three different plays after analyzing their scripts thoroughly in the classroom. Q30 spoke with Brooks Applebaum on the course's return. You know, if they even have a tiny bit of curiosity about theater, they will definitely leave the course understanding a lot more. My students will have a much deeper understanding of, um, of theater, and it's also an understanding that they can apply to things like film and television shows. Now heading back onto campus, another annual event has just taken place at the Burt Con Courts. Vanessa Blasi has the story. Fires are lit and food is served. The International Business Society held its annual International Business Dinner this evening in Quinnipiac University's Burt Con Court. The dinner brings together all students and faculty, especially within the School of Business, to support a greater cause. The Integrated Refugee and Immigrant Services, also known as IRIS. With the climate in the world nowadays, IRIS uh, has a very, very important role with uh, getting people uh, out from places that they don't feel safe um, and bring them into the United States to make that their home. Uh, so all of us in the International Business Program uh, know the importance of IRIS and are happy to support them in any way we can. Tickets to tonight's dinner were $8 each and all proceeds were donated to IRIS. 
Some students that attended even had a personal connection to the cause. Yeah, my aunt works for a nonprofit working with women in um, Afghanistan. Um, so I actually volunteered a lot this summer with her, and I just think it's a great cause, so I was happy to come. Tonight's dinner not only brings good food, dancing, and awards, but it also is a happy memory for some Quinnipiac alumni. You know, I enjoy the fact that I've been part of it since it first began, in the very beginning. I was the, the first graduating class of international business um, majors here. Bogdanov says the dinner provides a chance for students to understand the importance of international business. Between what we import, what we export, and globalization that goes on, you know, the, the, the whole business world is, is, you know, is international business right now. Gathered behind me are trays and trays of all different types of food, from Italian to Chinese and plenty more. The International Business Society hopes that students will get the chance to try them all. I mean, you name it, we got it. And our goal is to not only support restaurants in the local community, but also show our students foods that they might not have. George says that anyone interested in volunteering for IRIS can sign up on their website or at the table set up at the front of Burt Khan. For Q30 News, I'm Vanessa Block. What a great way to give back. Now, moving on to the national stage, we have David Klepfer here to give us the latest. David, what do you got for us? Thanks, Fiona. There's a lot going on nationally, so let's take a look at North Korea. Tensions are rising as North Korea fired more than 20 missiles around the already tense sea border between North and South Korea. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's military began the exchange by test-firing ballistic missiles, one of which landed south of the buffer zone for the first time since its creation in 1948. South Korea responded by firing three air-to-surface missiles towards the border. North Korea was quick to answer, firing off 100 rounds of artillery and additional missiles that lasted into the evening. These came as a response from Kim to South Korea and the United States resuming joint military exercises. The United States and South Korea say the drills, after being halted by the Trump administration, are strictly defensive and have no intention of invading North Korea. When news came out that there was a case of polio in New York, the United States Center for Disease Control turned to Shoshana Bernstein, a local vaccine educator. Bernstein is part of the Orthodox Jewish community, one of many groups with low vaccination rates, partnering with Dr. Rochelle Walensky to prepare presentations on education campaign ideas. The only problem was that Bernstein was not paid a cent for her hours and months of work. Though the CDC has a multi-billion dollar budget, they do not have the authority from Congress to hire consultants. Walensky plans to appeal Congress and try to make a change that would allow quicker hiring during times of crisis, providing more financial flexibility to respond with urgency. Lastly, the gunman who killed 17 people at a high school in Parkland, Florida in 2018 is set to be sentenced to life in prison without parole. Last year, Nicholas Cruz pleaded guilty to 17 counts of murder and 17 counts of attempted murder for the atrocities committed at Majory Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. The shooting remains the deadliest high school in schools that had deadliest high school shooting in the United States. The state sought out the death penalty for Cruz. However, the defense argued for a life sentence, stating that his mental intellectual deficits stemmed from a parental alcohol, prenatal alcohol. As a result, three jurors voted life, making that the final sentence in Florida. The death penalty must be unanimous in order to be final. That's all I have for national news. Back to you guys at the desk. Now we're going to stop this show for a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we'll have a Quinnipiac Sports update. But Ben, when does the news ever stop? Never, except for the next minute and a half. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This I is good, that. and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. Meet the scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early.
but I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. We're back from our last time out of the night and are ready to kick it over to Andrew Reynolds for the latest Konithiak Sports Update. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Bobcat Sports Update. I'm Andrew Reynolds. Let's start off with the Red Hot Women's Ice Hockey Team as they hosted the two top ten. Or they hosted two top ten nationally ranked teams, as in the number eight Cornell Big Red and the number eight Colgate Raiders. The Bobcats beat the Big Red with ease with a four to one victory. And following the next night, they shut out Colgate with a final of three to nothing. After the victories over the weekend, the Bobcats remain undefeated with a 9-0 record and move up from number 7 in the country to number 4 in the NCAA rankings. This week, we also learned the team will be playing the Harvard Crimson in the Frozen Fenway Series on January 6th. Now moving on to cross country, over the weekend, the women's team became your 2022 MAC Conference champions, their first since 2015. They did not just win, they won in a dominating fashion, beating the second place finisher, Sienna, by 20 points. The Bobcats' victory came huge as a result of five runners finishing within the top nine. Lastly, on to the pitch, the women's soccer team finished the year as the MAC regular season champions following a 3 0 win versus Mount St. Mary's. There were also a ton of award winners to come out of this squad as Rebecca Cook unsurprisingly claims the Golden Boot after leading the nation with 19 goals on the season. Cook and six of her teammates received first All-Mac honors. They will host Canisius tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock with the winner securing their spot in the MAC championship. That is all for your Bobcat Sports Update. Andrew Reynolds, Q30. What an empowering story from Andrew right there, especially since they can potentially hold a MAC championship in Hamden for the first time ever. And after the game, Q30 was able to speak with Captain Olivia Scott on what it means to have the playoff run through Hamden. Yeah, it's just like hard work does pay off. We've been saying it since August. We've been um, wanting six shutouts. We just got six shutouts. Like we're predicting little things and it's, it's good to know that our hard work's paid off and I think we're ready. Now we're ready for a home final game as well, so. Now, Fiona, one of the really cool things about Olivia Scott is when you talk about, talk to her, excuse me, in the first two games of the season, she's one of those players that went really under the radar, mm -hmm. and then three games, five goals, and it allowed her to get Mac first team, uh, and something she's really never done in her career. And when you talk to her about that, she kind of discusses how she feels like she's very much under the radar of all of the coaches across the league, as well as Dave Clark would say the same thing. And he said that they just kind of got to watch her play. You got to watch film, analyze her to really see how she performs on the field. But it's a really cool story to see her do so well and kind of push her team across the finish line. Like you said, the first time having mm -hmm. the playoffs run through Hamden. Definitely. She's definitely a powerhouse that the Quinnipiac Bobcats are desperately thankful for. All right, also don't forget that Quinnipiac Athletics have offered free tickets for tomorrow's semifinal game against Canisius College at 2 p.m. All you need to do is bring a valid QUID to the ticket table to support their Bobcats in their MAC tournament journey. Well, that's our show. To stay up to date with all things Q30 related, visit our website Q30TV.com and follow us on Twitter at Q30 News. Also, download the Q30 app available in the App Store now. For the producers and everyone else behind the scenes, that's Ben Kane. I'm Fiona Stevens, and this has been the Q30 Newscast. Happy Wednesday, everybody.